Traditional missions have usually sent citizens of North America or Europe to poor areas of the world. They then slowly tend to penetrate the country with medicine and the good news of Jesus Christ. While there have been victories, progress has been painfully slow and expensive. The world's population is over six billion people. Most of the world lives their life in poverty and suffering without Christ as Savior. This is why Medical Ambassadors International, MAI, founded in 1981, is dedicated to the systematic preparing of Christian nationals. Medical Ambassadors is composed of believers partnering to train, assist, and mentor national workers in the developing world. The ultimate goal of MAI is to give the opportunity to receive Christ to every person physically helped and to every person taught. This effective ministry combines medical care, prevention of disease, health education, evangelism, and discipleship. MAI's goal is to maximize every dollar given to assure the healing of as many people as possible, to win the lost, and to nurture the believers. The results are churches are planted in unchurched areas and that churches grow in churched areas. Community health evangelism, called CHE, is a means of helping communities to meet their own needs holistically, physical, social, emotional, and spiritual. They are trained in the prevention of disease and the promotion of good health as they are taught how to live the abundant Christian life. Community health evangelists, called CHEs, do this in their own villages under MAI's guidance. They then train others in the transferable truths that they have learned in such areas of agriculture, nutrition, maternal child care, as well as protection of clean water, purification of water, and proper personal sanitation through better waste disposal and latrines, and helping a family to earn a living through microloans and training, as well as teaching adults to read. Evangelism and discipleship are at the center of obedience to the Lord's command. Physical, emotional, social, and spiritual problems are often interrelated. HIV AIDS have become a major killer of the adults in some communities, dying, leaving thousands of orphans. Many times, the only solution to the physical problem is a spiritual solution. People's lives need to be transformed by Jesus Christ, who changes their beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors from the inside. For a better understanding of community health evangelism, it's helpful to define the words CHE represents. What is community? A community is a group of people living together with common leaders, interests, and problems, who know each other, depend on each other, and have a sense of belonging. What is evangelism and discipleship? Evangelism is telling others how they can come to know Jesus Christ personally. Discipleship is the process of helping believing Christians to grow in their walk with God. But CHE helps people to be healthy physically, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. Good health is living in harmony, harmony with God, harmony with others, harmony with oneself, and harmony with nature. What is physical health? Health care can be viewed from two perspectives, prevention or cure of illness. Curative medicine seems to cure disease after one becomes sick. It is expensive, narrow in scope, and ineffective in reaching the masses. But curative clinics must be available for those who need it. Prevention helps to avoid medicine in the first place. It is far better to prevent disease by teaching people development rather than a costly expense of curing the suffering already begun. People will walk from one to five miles to a clinic. There may be an opportunity for evangelism and some follow-up, but then little discipleship. What is needed is a CHE program to meet people at their place of need, staffed by local people who have a lower level of formal education. Their main job is preventing disease, not curing it. Here there is a much better opportunity for evangelism, follow-up and discipleship because the people are more accessible in their home area. The CHE program has three areas. First is the training team, which is usually made up of four people of differing skills, such as agriculture, healthcare, spiritual or development. The training team chooses an area approximately two to five miles in size where 3,000 to 5,000 people live in several villages. The team helps the communities in the target area 
to organize themselves, identify their problems, and then do something about solving those problems. The second element of CHE is the committee chosen by the community, which is then trained by the training team. The committee oversees the program as it plans, budgets, implements, and supervises the CHE volunteers. The committee supervision is key in the sense that the program belongs to the community. The third element is the community health evangelists. They are men and women who are recruited by the committee to undergo training and generally have less than seven years of formal education. The CHEs walk to a central location two days each week for 30 to 40 half days to be trained. They receive a physical and spiritual topic each day. Teaching methods include lectures as well as participatory techniques such as stories, songs, role plays, demonstration and small group discussions. On days when there is no class, the trainers spend time with the CHEs visiting homes and modeling what the CHEs are expected to teach. The job of the volunteer CHE is to visit the homes of their neighbors sharing the physical and spiritual truth they have learned. They are primarily concerned with prevention of disease, some first aid, evangelism, and living the abundant Christian life. Chays rarely dispense drugs as that is normally up to the staff at curative clinics. The Chays effectiveness is measured in terms of multiplication. MAI trains the Chays who in turn train their neighbors who train others who train others. Changed individual lives physically, emotionally, socially and spiritually. Those changed lives help change their neighbors lives thereby multiplying the results throughout a community so that a community is changed inside out. The CHE program continues after outside assistance has left the village. It spreads to adjacent villages and ultimately the country is changed physically, socially and spiritually. We have learned a number of lessons. The important one is that our main emphasis must be on changed individual lives, not on the change of social structures where so many development programs are aimed. Change comes about best when there are good role models the people can observe and follow. The trainers are models for the Chays and the Chays for their neighbors. A new ministry location must be carefully chosen for the greatest probability of success, not necessarily where the need is the greatest because it becomes a model for other areas. It is important that people become active, meaningful participants in the development process. Development must be people-centered, not project or technology-centered, and must lead to individual self-reliance under God's direction. Any program must start where the people are meeting their perceived needs, not where we think they are, hope they are, or want them to be. It is important to have one or two locally influential people who will champion the project. They must have the time, vision, and commitment to make CHE successful. It is good to start the CHE program with an activity that has high visibility, which builds interest and credibility. Screening school children for health problems is an excellent way. Here's how it works. We examine children for diarrhea, worms, anemia, eating habits, and other local health problems. At a parent meeting, each parent has given their child's results, as well as the overall community findings. We then ask the parents what they are going to do. This produces high interest and commitment from the parents to help their children. The people of the community must be able to take initiative and carry on the work before the training team is free to leave the area. In one location, we worked alongside the pastor who caught the vision for Che. His training team then trained over 150 Che's in 40 villages in his area. With their own resources, the people built a clinic, then a 20-bed ward, hired nursing staff, and ran monthly vaccination outreaches. They also protected over 100 water sources and had five wells drilled by the government. At the beginning, 70% of the people had a problem with alcohol because they made their living brewing banana beer. After five years with the Chays doing active evangelism and discipleship, teaching people how to earn their living by vegetable gardening, growing fruit trees, coffee, wheat, and sunflowers, beekeeping, and fish farming. Today, less than 30% now have a problem with alcohol. In addition, two-thirds of the people today have a relationship
with Jesus Christ. Another important element in the CHE program is the training of other Christian organizations. This enables the CHE concept to be multiplied rapidly throughout the country. For example, one church project had 118 workers, but included little training in evangelism and follow-up. They saw an average of only 150 decisions for Jesus Christ each year in their program. Two years later, after adequate spiritual training with the CHE program, and with their ministry expanded to 230 CHEs, they saw 15,000 decisions for Christ a year. Over the past five years, we have trained over 1,000 people from 245 Christian organizations who have trained more than 20,000 CHEs. We have several different models for starting a CHE program in different situations. The first one we have just described is a community-based program. The second one is a family-based, where a Christian family trained as CHEs moves to an unreached village and begins to minister. The family-based ministry is used in restricted or creative access countries where there are few Christians. Initially, there is no community responsibility or leadership since the CHEs are ministering to the community, but they are not under the community leadership. In the foothills of the Himalaya Mountains, we are using the family-based model in 90 villages in eastern Nepal and northern India, where over 80 fellowships or churches have been started in four years. As people come to Christ, experience God's love, and see the benefits of an integrated ministry, a church-based CHE program is begun. In addition, the program may start a church where the community is fragmented and there is little feeling of oneness. The church-based model is useful for urban slum. Here, committee members and CHEs may be members of one church. Although they are reaching out to the whole community, the church must be large enough with sufficient resources to continue the program after training. A government-based model was used in the former Soviet Union, where there had been a very authoritarian medical structure. Through the government system, we offer to help improve the health care in one district with the lowest level of medical care by participatory teaching techniques. They learned how to mobilize their community to take more responsibility for their own health. The spiritual teaching deals with moral-based topics, which are accepted by the government. This model is being used in the former Soviet Union's Central Asian location. Worldwide, there are vocationally trained national Christians desiring to use their vocational skills as a means to reach spiritual needs. The national church and Christian non-government organizations have become interested in providing community-based development to their people and also to be shown how to integrate their health and development outreach with reaching people for Christ and seeing churches grow or be planted in unreached areas. Medical Ambassadors International has the proven transferable CHE training techniques, materials and programs. We are praying to reach over 100 million rural people that would be helped physically, emotionally, socially and reached with the claims of Jesus Christ. The CHE strategy has been carried out by MAI starting two to three nationally staffed CHE projects as models in each country. We are aiming at having 25 to 50 organizations use the CHE strategy in developing countries. By having successful ongoing projects, validity and credibility are established for the training of other groups. This allows them to see tangible examples upon which they can build their own integrated programs. Further rapid multiplication takes place as national organizations begin to use the training materials and concepts throughout their ministries. Where there are few local Christians, we partner with other mission agencies to develop CHE. The people and programs are supplied by the other agencies, while MAI provides the training and ongoing site mentoring to help it establish a successful CHE program. Many denominations and missions have asked, how can our people get involved? because they see how CHE is attempting to integrate a social outreach program with discipleship and evangelism. You can be involved with this compelling missionary strategy by choosing to use the strategy, by providing the people to be trained, or by becoming a partner with MAI to reach an unreached people or country. And most valuable, by praying for the developing world to be reached for Christ's sake.
Will you be willing to commit yourself to become an active part of one of the most effective strategies today? Will you become one of God's change agents? For more information, contact Medical Ambassadors International, P.O. Box 576645, Modesto, California, 95357. Phone in the USA, 888-403-0600. On the web, contact us at medicalambassadors.org. Email info at med-amb.org.